There are a lot of very, very exciting simulation games coming out this year. Simulation games are taking over, they're becoming increasingly popular, and these are the ones I am most excited for. The first game I'm very excited for is Park Beyond. Ever since Roller Coaster Tycoon had a massive downfall, Planet Coaster seemed to be the next best game that's popped up. Don't get me wrong, I love Planet Coaster, but I find it very, very exhausting, and that's because it requires a lot of expertise in order to pull off a nice looking space and it just feels quite overwhelming to me at times. Park Beyond seems to be taking a very different approach than Planet Coaster was taking which is why I'm really excited for it. The game itself looks incredibly colourful and out there and wacky. A lot of the rides look really extravagant and exciting and I think it's always nice to have that level of customization in the game and the graphics of it look really really incredible and goofy and out there and fun. The concept of this pack is like physics defying enhancements for your rides, having extra levels, cannons, jumps, so many impossible concepts that would definitely not exist in real life. But that's what I think adds to the charm to the game. With a lot of other coaster building games, sometimes it can be really frustrating building roller coasters because not everything always works physically and logistically. But in this game, it seems that it doesn't really matter as much. Obviously, there are a lot of strategy elements to this game as there are in all of these kind of tycoon simulation games but the building system for what I've seen looks really fun and intuitive and easy to use meaning that you can pick it up at any level and you don't have to be a nerd in order to make it work. The next game I'm extremely excited to see is Coral Island. The great thing about Coral Island is it doesn't really seem marketed towards children and instead it seems marketed towards a much older audience of people who enjoy these kinds of games. It has a really interesting gameplay mechanic that's coming, which is basically about looking after the environment and dealing with an oil spill and trying to rid it of pollution and trash. And you can actually use trash to craft different things. It's actually very similar to Stardew Valley in that, for example, you have a dungeon system where you can do mining, but also fight different monsters. It has a really great romanceable system. And I will say all of the romanceable characters in this game are literally so so hot! <laughs> If you are thirsty, you will love this game. It also comes with some really cool elements like exploring different kinds of temples and things, as well as just a basic farming experience and it has different events. It contains one of everything, but it doesn't feel like a jack of all trades in that all of these different things are just mediocre. It feels like they're all very well thought out. And the actual game as well is incredibly beautiful. Many other well loved farming simulation games like Stardew Valley are very very fun to play and keep to that core cool traditional look, the very retro look, but Coral Island is very very modern and beautiful looking and colourful. The game right now is actually available for early access and I've been playing it quite a bit but I can't wait for the full final release. On the subject of Stardew Valley, the creator of Stardew Valley is working on another game called Haunted Chocolatier. This is an RPG simulation game in development and you play as a chocolatier, a person who makes chocolate and they live in a haunted castle. Sounds very random, I know. And in order to make all of the chocolates, you have to gather rare ingredients and make them all and sell them in your chocolate shop. Obviously, as it's made by the same guy who did Stardew Valley, it has the same very, very appealing retro style to it that I know a lot of people will love. Obviously, the word haunted is in the name, so there are ghosts in there. And it's also very gothic looking as well. But at the same time, it also feels very colorful. It is a town game just like Stardew Valley is like a town life game but it has a lot more action RPG elements to it with a really strong focus on combat. Obviously in farming games like Stardew Valley or even Coral Island combat is more of like an afterthought where in this game it's going to be a much bigger deal. We really don't know that much about this game it's quite tight under wraps but from what it looks like from the offset it looks incredibly exciting to play. The next game I am incredibly excited for is Bloody Hell Hotel 
now. This is one of the more quirky and interesting and out there ones. It's like a cross between a vampire horror game and Stardew Valley. You play as a telepathic vampire waking up after a few centuries and discovering your mansion, which was once very beautiful, is now very, very crusty looking and has not stood the test of time. It's your job to turn this mansion into a thriving hotel, making sure that you earn enough money from guests by making the hotel look nice and making sure that they have a really great experience. It also contains the interesting element of having to consume blood and I'll be very interested to see exactly how they implement this. The game will allow you the ability to hire employees too which will be interesting. As well as running the hotel though you'll also have to farm for various different food and also do dungeon crawling to collect resources. It's just like a vampire survival horror simulation cozy game all in one. I'm not really sure what to think about it at this stage but it's a concept as I said we've never really seen before and I think it'll be really interesting to see how it's implemented. It is in quite early development right now though so we probably won't see it for a while. The next game that I'm very excited to see is Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life. After Harvest Moon rebranded Story of Seasons their first couple of games weren't the best I'm not gonna lie. A Wonderful Life though seems to be upgrading the game slightly. It still does have the very childish cutesy look as the previous games but I know a lot of people like that style. It's a remake of the original 2004 GameCube game which has the same title. So if you have some memories of that game it will sure be great for you. I'm excited to play it because that was my favourite Harvest Moon game. In true Story of Seasons fashion it will contain loads of events and seasonal festivals. You'll also have a lot of family events with your spouse and child. Harvest Moon wasn't the wokest farming simulation game but these days it's becoming a lot more woke. You can marry anyone regardless of gender. I think you can even have non-binary characters in this one. You can have weddings, there's some cool looking bachelors and bachelorettes. The game will allow for some nice customization too. It's a relatively simple farming simulation game. I think a lot of farming simulation games these days try to be so many different things. Whereas Story of Seasons seems to just keep it very, very core and simple, which I think is a nice break. The next game, well, not technically a game, but the next thing I'm excited for is the Stardew Valley 1.6 update. Stardew Valley has been out for a long time now, but every so often we get some really nice core cool updates for the game that come for free for all players. I love that the game doesn't have any DLC. It's not cash grabby unlike a lot of other simulation games. Every Stardew Valley update has added some really nice things. It's added some new events. It's added some new NPCs. It's added some new crops. It's added some new dialogue options. It's added some new places that you can visit. I'm really excited for the 1.6 update. The update is supposed to be a modding focus update making modders lives easier. Modding is not something that we've ever really seen in farming simulation games much before but Stardew Valley has changed that. I do feel like mods make Stardew Valley honestly so fun to play it over and over and over again. He has actually hinted that the 1.7 update will be a lot bigger but obviously that will be a lot further away but still I'm really excited to see what comes with 1.6. The next game I'm very excited for is My Time at Sandrock. My Time at Sandrock is kind of like a sequel to the original game My Time at Portia. Some of you might remember seeing this but I know not a lot of people have played it. This is a really interesting again take on the farming experience but makes it more RPG and actually has a lot of JRPG elements. It still has the classic crafting and farming formula but it has a more I want to say like mechanical look not like I don't want to say cyberpunk but like a metal look if you know what I mean by taking a look at the trailer and I think it's a really interesting aesthetic. Instead of just arriving at the town and becoming a farmer you actually inherit a piece of land and become the local builder and you spend the days helping the townsfolk with all of their different kind of building projects and equipment and machine upgrading projects. Of course you will have to harvest a lot of the craftables. In that sense I guess you could say it's probably a little bit more like Minecraft. The game functions like one of those farming sim games so there's bachelors and bachelorettes, marriage candidates, you can go fishing, collect relics etc. An interesting thing though about the game is missions. It comes with main story missions and also side missions. A lot of these games are very open-ended whereas this one is slightly more linear in that you have a main story overarching everything which I think is an interesting take because most simulation games are very open but sometimes too open because you don't really know what to do. It is a very random game. If you haven't played My Time at Portia the original title I do recommend it if you fancy something new but for now I'm really excited for My Time at Sandrock. The next 
next game I'm incredibly excited to play is Disney Dreamlight Valley. Now granted, I've already been playing this game a lot. I've been covering it a bit on my channel, but it is still in early access state, which means the entire game isn't fully released. It's still a little bit buggy and glitchy. They haven't added all of the features yet. It is going to be a freemium game, which means it will be a little bit cash grabby, but all of the major plan features for the game will be free. Obviously, the main cool thing about it is that it has a Disney skin on it, and every now and then in early access they update it with brand new Disney worlds and characters. I will admit the game does have a mobile app vibe to it in which you have to complete different missions for the characters but you also have to do farming and resource grinding. I'm not gonna lie it's probably the one I'm least excited for out of all of these just because it is very freemium mobile app grindy where you just have to constantly grind for things and complete missions for the sake of grinding and for the sake of completing missions. I really do hope that they add some updates in the future just to make it a little bit more quirky and interesting. Right now it just feels like a basic simulation game but I'm sure as time goes on it will be updated with a lot more stuff. I also ranked every single simulation game that I played in 2022 so if you didn't see that video make sure you check it out otherwise thank you very much for watching see you in the next one.